Hello and welcome to another episode of T4, Tips, Tricks, Toys and Tools for the Command Line, specifically for our users and others who like working on the Command Line. This week I'm going to retake Biobu, something I introduced last week and something which I think of as relatively central to this series because it's maybe the least known of the projects I want to talk about. Shout out and thanks to a friend who corrected my pronunciation of it. He knows Japanese, I don't, so uh, I think it's closer to Biubu, um, but I may still consistently get that wrong. Forgive me for that. Uh, recap of where we've been so far. I had one intro and overview session, and then we had three sessions having to do with bash, bash customization, bash colors, and bash prompts, um, as well as this terminal, multiplexer, shell, textual window manager, and whatever it's called. And there's a link uh, to the GitHub T4 repo that'll come up later again that supports this series. So really, um, what is this about? A text-based window manager, a bit of an amorphous concept, a powerful way to have multiple persistent sessions. And last week's episode stretched to almost 30 minutes. Uh, I really aim for keeping this as five, right, five or six, which is, which is difficult because the content is sometimes technical. And I felt that uh, omitted uh, or one of the sort of key aspects, I'm going to show that today. It's really great for anything text and terminal related that you can access either directly or over the network. And maybe I'll get to an example today. It will run wherever on your laptop, your server, any machine. Um, again, here's the uh, link to the website of the project. And at the bottom is a 10 minute long video with music, uh, very detailed that shows all the features. It's really quite eye opening, the stuff that we'd otherwise never get to. Something I didn't show last week is at the same website, the downloads page. So if you're running whichever form of Linux, um, it's there for you pre-made from the package manager and same on Mac OS. As there's a brew version. Um, this regroups two slides that we had last week with really the key commands. And with that, uh, I can just jump in and restart it again. Um, Shift F1 gives us basically a sheet sheet of the um, key combinations. It's useful to keep that printed out or go back to it every now and then. F9 is the setup where the status bar at the bottom can be um, set. I um, showed how the prefix command is there for new commands, renaming commands. So if I do control, um, in this case, backtick, I explained that last week. Uh, a for renaming, now we see that the demo window that I'm currently in got renamed demo, or we're just going to rename demo. Likewise, prefix C is a new one, um, alt and left uh, and right, or prefix N and P for next and previous cycles through windows, control two and shift, control F2 and shift F2, um, split windows in ways that they then can get rearranged, shift F8, cycles through all different permutations for the number of windows you currently have with shift 11 f11 you can get in and out and you can attach or detach so you can out of get out of this session or into this session what i hadn't really shown um and stressed and that's something i want to get to today with a little example is um, um uh, which window was i in i wanted to be not here i want to be and just got out of that T4. Um, suppose you had a really long running R script. This is a mock, it runs, but it doesn't really do anything because it just sleeps. But suppose you had something really long running. You're doing a Monte Carlo simulation over bootstrapping estimates from deep learning. I mean, something that takes longer than longer than long. So your computer will be churning. It's very important that it run and so you want to keep it running. So you can then envision running the script and the way i had this one set up was that it just you know appends output to a log file so you want to run look at the um, log file and on this screen i have mimicked this and started it um, i don't know a day or two ago so it just keeps running and you see my current time as i'm this taping it's uh, just before four in the afternoon and this is running because i instrumented the script to just sleep for a random number uh, of seconds that is uniformly distributed between 0 and 30. So I took the R unif 1 
that's between zero and one and multiplied by 30. So in just a little bit, it will just print another one following up on um, these two from David Kane and then Brian Ripley. Also it should. Um, and the key here really is that this persists. Imagine, for example, if I started a second terminal. So, so the first is it persists and it allows for multiple use. If I bring up Bayobu again, I have it here as well, and it doesn't affect the previous one. The only side effect that we see is that because of the imposed smaller window frame here, the largest possible display it can have over the union of all screens is the size of this one. So the previous one adapted and just shows us filler um, because there can only be one truthfully rendered version to the smallest possible size. So it adapts. If I get out of this one, the previous one immediately resnaps, but it gets better. If I go back in here again, and oops, of course, full command, and go to a session where I have a prompt um, like this one and say echo ABC, I'm typing on the right, you see it also happens on the left. It's really quite, um, quite magic that way. The same way um, also works if I, um, forget the window that I just showed. And for example, uh, I may get to that trick in another session. I have something running here called Barrier that is taken over from a project called Synergy, which is now uh, no longer free, but runs a small uh, fee. Um, so my laptop is to the left of the screen on which I'm recording this, and the Barrier program allows me to share one mouse and keyboard between the two of them. Barrier is quite nice. So now I'm just going in and connecting from Oh, I, I have already connected from the, on, on the laptop with an SSH session into the server. So it's the same thing. If on the laptop I bring up the small one, it um, re resizes to the smallest uh, available size. And that's the one on the laptop. Now, as I'm enlarging it on the laptop, I see that the laptop grows up to the size of the session that I have here. But the coolest thing really is that it's multiplexing. So on either one of the sessions, I can type something and it appears the same way on the other. That means you can have these sessions running on a machine, say in the office, just lock your screen, leave this running um, and Biobu using screen or Tmux are set up in such a way that it will just keep running. And then you can reconnect from somewhere else and pick it up as if you were sitting in front of that same machine. It is really powerful. Same way I could now just close this terminal and have a networking simulated accident. Maybe my frontline computer went down, blew up, got upgraded. Doesn't really matter. I just go back in, set myself up. I think I had to increase size here twice so that it looked uh, proper. Go back in and I am exactly where I was a second before. Um, very, very powerful because it persists. And that is something I hadn't gotten to last week. So. Um, we can have multiple sessions, they automatically resize. Um, you know, this is ideal for long running jobs, the long simulation that your grant depends upon, that your dissertation, um, you know, goes up or down in, uh, in success scores, um, uh, whichever one it is, or a particular you know, analysis that you're running. It's really well suited for long running analyses. Um, there's another key feature here that I should mention that runs on the same um, uh, on the same underlying technology. What makes this happen that several f basically front end representation of the same session can access it that internally all this happens with a socket. Socket is a particular Unix trick that's sort of somewhere between a networking device and a file access, but you know programs can then connect through it. If you set the socket up in such a way that um, your colleague Bob or your colleague Alice may also read and write to the socket and give them the location of the socket and they're on the same machine, then all three of you, Bob, Alice and you, can have the same shared Bayobu or Tmux session. And that works for any program that you can run in a terminal. You get automatic sharing and joint editing. Remember how on the laptop I typed something was immediately on the screen? It just works. Forget all that hoopla about code, um, having multi-edit mode. Uh, some people are saying that our studio really should have that or had that experimentally. It's just, it's already there just by virtue of Bayobu. Oh, and did I just say 
code or R Studio. So um, another really useful trick, because I just saw people mentioning again just how awesome it is that in R Studio you don't have to run the code in the console, you can also run it in the terminal. Well, the terminal, believe it or not, is a terminal. So in the same terminal, I can do anything that I can do in the terminal. So I can pick up the Bayubu session that I had uh, a second ago. It's just what then happens is that, of course, now you're in a browser style environment. So you don't always get all the same keys. So the alt uh, or the, 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 the prefix key that I used, um, um, sorry, the key combination that I just used to cycle through the windows, which is alt and arrow keys works on the command and it doesn't work anymore in the quasi browser environment in the studio, but the prefix command for Bayubo and then NNP allows me to go back and forth between these screens. So now I'm in our studio, I can do the same trick again and bring up code, which, uh, you know, some people rave about and I still haven't gotten all that used to and bring up Bayubo in here. And I'm back in my same session again under the size constraints that we mentioned before. So if something runs in a terminal, you can use Bayobo to multiplex, persist, share, um, arrange it any way you like. You'd seen here a little bit. Um, let me just get out of this because we don't really need this or this. A studio I think is clever and tells me, oops, you know, the terminal is busy. Do you really want to quit? So I can do this cleanly here, get out of it this way that for example um let me make this a little wider i typically do um any and all of this on a full screen display um so that from terminal 1 to 16 it runs all the way and by cycling through you'd seen a few this for example is one that i run all the time and just do a um because i up repeat for the command that goes to the new york website and updates the uh, COVID 19 per um, state data and then i just look at you know, quick seven day averages for the um, county that I'm living in, which is the largest in Illinois, and which is basically the number of Illinois cases. And um, luckily it's coming down a, a little, but uh, I digress. We were just here for a second. So um, that again is Bayobu. You can even make it multi-user. And of course you can run it inside code, inside our studio. Um, um, the world really is your oyster and there's no limit for the things one can do with that. Um, and this is some content that I thought uh, um, didn't really come across last week in showing how powerful um, this is as a tool. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. So give it a try, go to the Bayobo website, maybe look at the 10 minute video and just, just play around. We may come back to Bayobo one more time next week. Uh, I'll have to think about that a little bit. That otherwise concludes it for today. The um, T4 repo under my name at GitHub has the links to the slides and videos and whatever, and I'll, I'll put the R script up there uh, either later today or tomorrow morning. And otherwise, here's the usual list of my um, presentation links, um, mail, GitHub, Twitter, and again, the T4 repo. That's all I had for today. I hope you find Bayobu interesting and promising. Um, I find it a really wonderful tool. Give it, um, give it a chance, read up a little on it, watch or rewatch the videos and just experiment. It's, uh, it's worth it. Thanks and talk to you next week.